Hello guys! In some previous videos on this channel we've been using HDMI cables uh, with grabbers, adapters, some Ethernet patch cords to install our Raspberry Pi software. But what if you don't have any of those accessories or simply you don't want to use those? All you want to have is your power supply. Then you might want to consider doing a headless installation. So this is Thomas from Hotkey 404 and today I will show you how to use advanced options in Raspberry Pi Imager. But before we get started, let me grab those cables before my wife sees the mess. First, let's use our Raspberry Pi Imager on Windows. After selecting our storage, we are going to go to choose OS. And at this point, in our previous videos, we've used some uh, custom images like RaspBX or CentOS. But if we stick with the first one, which is Raspberry Pi OS or some other systems, for example, Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit, uh, we have this extra option, which uh, was introduced in version 1.6, and it's usually hidden unless you choose this uh, specifically designed Raspberry Pi OS, then it just appears. If you want to try these advanced options on some other operating systems, uh, you'll see that the option disappears, but with Control shift x you can just open those options. So going back to our system and after selecting Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit, let's check what are some of the options that we can use. Maybe as you're watching the video, some of the options have been slightly changed, but you'll get the general idea. As you see, you can set your host name. Uh, you can use SSH, which is, uh, I think, really important. And then uh, you have two options. You can use password authentication and set username and password. I'm going to change username to hotkey404 uh, and set my password. But instead of uh, using your password, you can allow public key authentication only. And here, if you have Putigen and you have created your SSH key, you can import the key and then you'll be able to log in, I think, in a more secure way using a passwordless authentication. Since we have that, we can configure our wireless LAN. And I'm going to type my uh, session ID. Unfortunately, there is no way to discover it. You have to enter it manually. Uh, then I'm going to type the password for my Wi-Fi and uh, change the country. Lastly, you can uh, set some localization options like time zone, keyboard, ejecting media, playing sound, or sending telemetry. But uh, going back to the very beginning, you have this option to select uh, those settings for just this session or to remember those settings uh, every time you open the application, which I think is very important if you decide to write more than one device. So having one, two, three, five, or, you know, dozens of devices, I think having those settings remembered is quite useful. So having that, let's just write our card. After it finishes, I will just uh, remove the SD card, insert into Raspberry Pi, and plug in the power supply. Then while it's booting up, I'm going to open my router and then check the HCP lease to find my device. Here I can see my address host name as Raspberry Pi and the address 1042.205. So after closing this, I will just open PuTTY and connect to my Raspberry. If you selected password authentication, just type your hostname or IP address 1042.205 or whatever you set in your case. Uh, and as you can see, we have a login prompt. So just type in your username, pi or whatever you chose. Here it doesn't work because I've selected uh, my key authentication. So I will just uh, start a new session. And here in data, I will add my username and in SSH authentication information, I'm going to select my private key. 
As you see, with our public key authentication, we can easily connect and do whatever we like. For example, do sudo apt update and update the system to whatever you need to do with your system. But uh, what if you don't have uh, Windows, or but you use some other system like, for example, Mac OS or Linux? It's just the same way. For example, in this uh, Lubuntu, I'm going to type in terminal sudo apt search rpi hyphen imager, and after uh, entering my password, you'll notice that I can see Raspberry Pi imaging utility. And what is really nice, it's in the same version as my Windows. So you can easily use both of them. So to install, I'm going to use sudo apt install rpi imager. And that's it. Just open your menu, go to accessories, and you'll find your Raspberry Pi imager. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. As usual, you can find these materials on our website in the blog section. So have a great day and see you in the next one.